Hello everyone, it's been a little over 30 days since we released our first game, Submorse, on Steam. Um, and I, I just want to thank everybody who played the game, everybody who reviewed the game. Um, I loved reading all of the reviews. Uh, we all did as a team, even if we, we didn't respond to all of them. Um, there were some really well thought out in-depth reviews and uh, uh, people had a lot of great feedback, a lot of um, cool suggestions of stuff they wanted to, to add to the game. So I want to thank everybody who played it. Um, and I wanted to tell you guys a little bit about uh, how release went on Steam, some of the things we learned, uh, what some of the numbers were. Of course, the game is free, so um, we didn't make any money off of it, but um, we were able to see uh, how many people downloaded it. Um, so those things, and then a little bit of the development process, how the game ended up the way it was, um, that's some of the stuff I, I want to talk to you guys about um, in this video. So we released our game on March 31st, and in the first month we have received 3,800 downloads, um, which I am very happy with, and I think all of us uh, working on it are, are very happy with that. Um, I personally... Uh, when we hit release was going to be satisfied with 10 reviews, 100 downloads, and 1,000 store page visits, but um, I didn't realize then that a, a 10 to 1 ratio of store page visits to downloads and then a 10 to 1 ratio of downloads to reviews, even for a free game, is very ambitious, um, so that's not quite what we got. As you can see here by this... Uh, total downloads graph over the last two months uh, roughly um, or last last few months when we released it on the 31st and then in the couple days following we really didn't get that many downloads um, we got a few uh, a couple reviews started to roll in it wasn't till a few days afterwards and as we approached 10 reviews that I believe our game got featured on the free-to-play hub um, and the downloads just exploded um, from about April 7th to April 15th uh, that was probably the biggest um, area time period of traffic we got um, most of our downloads came then but then it kind of steadily staggered off and our downloads didn't all come from the first day or the first couple of days um, like I think you may have with a lot of games, but we didn't really market this game at all. <laughs> um, we made the YouTube announcement the day the game came out. We put a couple teasers to our uh, 50 followers on Twitter um, in the weeks leading up, but but other than that, we did not. Um, we didn't really tell anybody about the game. Uh, so this is the graph of the impressions and the store page visits. So how many people saw our game, then how many people decided to actually click on and visit the store page, um, what the percentage rate of people who did that was. Um, and as you can see, the graph is similar. Uh, the, the visits and impressions graph looks like the downloads graph, um, which is probably because our game is free. So most people who, who visited it um, are probably more likely to actually just download it because it doesn't cost you anything. It's very easy to do. Um, it ballooned uh, a few days after release, or actually a, a little over a week after release. Um, and I believe 4.5 million of our impressions came from the free-to-play hub. That seems to be where most people found it. Um, 92,000 visits and almost 4,000 downloads obviously is not a 10% rate, uh, even for a free game. Um, but uh, this is still like far, far exceeding our, our expectations. I think um, if there's anything that really surprised us the most, um, it's really the amount of impressions you get on Steam. I don't think any of us had any idea. Um, I, I, I guess mainly because our game was free, but just how many people, how many eyes can see it. There is a disclaimer here that there was a lot of bot traffic during this time. Um, and uh, I remember when I originally checked the stats a while ago, I 
I could see that that was true. There are a lot of bots, a lot of, you know, um, bots out there just getting data and information from the Steam pages and from new releases of games and stuff like that. Nothing really malicious. Uh, but still, that is that is a large audience potentially to put your game in front of. Um, but at the end of the day, of course, it doesn't all translate to store visits, and then all those store visits don't translate immediately to downloads. All right, so here's the wish list information uh, about our game, which you know doesn't mean as much because our game was free. Uh, it's it's still kind of interesting that. The, the conversion rate of the wish list is so low um, I guess low quote unquote uh, <laughs> considering the game was free and that once it comes out if it was on your wish list you can just click download 18.3% um, says there's not enough data to compare it against other games um, I'm not sure if that's high or low I think it's probably around what you would expect even for a paid game I don't really think anybody gets 50% if they do um, then their game's probably really good uh, so yeah there are actually even um, a couple people who wish list the game on Mac even though we we didn't ship it to Mac so sorry sorry to Mac users so as a team of three we worked on Submorse for almost a year um, from start to finish and release and the original plan of the game was quite different from how we ended up releasing it. You're gonna see some old footage um, and some images in the background uh, of this video. The original idea of Submorse was a story puzzle game that used the Morse feature as the main mechanic, but it wasn't the bulk of the game um, or the, the gameplay even. Uh, we, we were comparing our game a lot when we when we talked with each other to try to get our idea across um, and make sure everybody was on the same page. We, we discussed games like Witness and Firewatch a lot as some things we wanted to do. Um, we had an entire story planned out with branching decisions. We wanted people to be able to use Morse code to solve puzzles, to activate things in the sub. Um, and to actually communicate and talk with other people and progress the story. Uh, we had many, many more rooms in the sub planned out. Even in some of the earlier prototypes, we allowed the player to go into the other rooms and um, we had like door animations and sounds and everything. Um, at, at one point in the development, we also talked about adding features from uh, games like FTL faster than light where you would have to manage resources in the sub so your sub would have like an oxygen level a power level um, and those things could uh, drain and, and decrease or increase over time depending on the actions you took and so we wanted to kind of squeeze in like a sub management system into the game uh, and really we really never had a clear unified vision of the game um, we we weren't always at, on the same page and we couldn't exactly pinpoint or describe the gameplay loop um, and this went on for a while and we really tried to trudge through it uh, and we we kept trying to add features and we thought up features that we couldn't realistically implement and the way we had made the puzzles was, or the, we called them puzzles. Um, they were the Morse panels. We called the, the Morse panels puzzles because the system used to be, uh, there were panels across the sub and the, the, the Morse phrase you had to, to decode um, to complete it, whether it be Hello World or ABC, it was determined at compile time. Um, and once you completed that puzzle, that's it. That puzzle was completed and you were moving on and so that's how the original gameplay was set up was to go from room to room and solve puzzles and then we later decided well we want we want the player to come back to a panel and solve multiple puzzles on it treat it like a computer where he can you know um, communicate with others 
unlock parts of the ship uh, and pretty much do anything that you could normally do with, with a physical action, but rather via Morse code instead, as a command almost. And that really didn't work with our panel system because the, the data in the panel system was preset and predefined. And we, we basically didn't design it to be um, super flexible like that. Uh, so pretty far into the development, we were really s slowing down and struggling to make progress and starting to become unmotivated. And we realized we didn't really have, um, we, we couldn't really achieve what we had wanted which was originally using Morse code in the game to communicate with other people. Um, you know, other, not necessarily real people in multiplayer, um, but you know, just uh, talking to someone instead of participating in dialogue like in a Telltale game, doing it via Morse code. That, that was, I think, um, our original vision. Uh, but we never really could get there, and so we faced the really tough decision of, of we almost wanted to just abandon the game at one point but we decided against it and we decided we're going to finish it and we're going to finish it with the core mechanic um not any of the story stuff any of the puzzle things uh any of the resource management systems we're just going to finish the morse code part and we always knew that we needed to teach the player some Morse code if he was ever going to be proficient and use Morse to engage in conversation. So we really focused a lot of work on a tutorial. And then after we had the tutorial coming together, we made the practice mode um, and then the time trial mode uh, so that you could actually show off how good you were. And so the game then became a basic um, Morse code almost tool. Uh, to practice and to get better and we didn't want to completely ditch the 3d environment we had made the submarine um, so we very well could have made this a completely 2d game maybe it would have ported better that way to other platforms wouldn't have been nearly as as intensive or performant or uh, performance intensive but um, we wanted to keep it because because uh, um, our artists Kalimi put, put a lot of great work into the environment. And, you know, um, if we didn't keep it, we wouldn't have the great basketball achievement that I think <laughs> some people feel is the best part of our game. And I can't, I can't disagree, honestly. Um, adding that achievement was, was good. Having one achievement in your game over zero, um, I, I would definitely recommend. I think some people do just play the game to get the achievement, which, you know, do, it, do what you want to do. Nothing wrong with that. Um, so yeah, that's, that's basically how we ended up where we were in a very short summarized way. It's really hard to explain and, and I've tried explaining it to some people, but I, I can never, um, explain it right. How tough, um, this, this was and how in hindsight, a lot of the features that many people have been suggesting that we add um, and that we wanted to add seem simple enough. It seems like it's it's easy to expand upon the game, but the way development went, uh, it didn't really turn out that way. Um, you know, making making games is very hard, and uh, it's you know not it's it's something where we're always learning, um, and we learned a lot from this project, and uh, we're very ultimately very happy with. Um, getting it out on Steam, finishing it, making it our first first release. And uh, we were very, very happy to see all the, the feedback we got. Honestly, all, all the feedback was, was very positive. Um, and that was probably the best part about all this, was reading, reading the reviews. All right, so thank you to everyone who has watched up to this point. Our plan is to continue to keep Submores bug free. We don't have any content updates planned, but we're going to be checking discussion posts on Steam, the Twitter, Discord, and everything else. If people have problems, we want to make sure we, we keep fixing those. But other than that, we've started working on another game, and 
I'm looking forward to sharing more information about that here on the channel as soon as things start to materialize. And until then, thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.